matchups. SNF and MNF Sunday Night Football New England Denver Team Totiles. Patriots 27. Broncos 19 has no NFL team is better than the Patriots at exploiting opponent weaknesses. A pass first plan should be expected against a Broncos defense that ranks number two in run defense DVOA but a middling 15th. Against the pass due largely to Denver's inability to generate pressure. The Broncos rank a disappointing 17th in South's 19th and a putrid 31st in quarterback hits 35 providing enemy signal callers with clean pockets. The top 12 fantasy passer in six of his last seven games. Tom Brady returns from his bye with 300 plus yards and slash or multiple touchdowns in seven straight weeks. James White looks like the Patriots' safest Week 10 backfield bet with target counts of 16 and 8 in New England's last two meetings with Denver. This year, White ranks second among NFL running backs in reception 43. In two games entering the bike, Rex Burthead logged chronological snap rates of 18% greater than 31% with touch totals of 7 greater than 11. Albeit risky with no guarantees on his role in a four-man committee, Burkhead is at least worthy of flex play discussion. One-dimensional grinder Mike Gillisley is off the Week 10 board against a Broncos defense allowing just 3.43 yards per carry to enemy backs. Gillisley is scoreless since we too and hasn't drawn a passing game target all season. Diane Lewis remains the Pats' nominal lead back with rising touch counts of 9 greater than 11 greater than 14 greater than 17 leading into the open date. Since Lewis appears to have displaced Gillisley as New England's primary scoring position runner, Lewis offers the highest touchdown ceiling in this running back core. 2 flash 12 flash 0 greater than 7 flash 91 flash 0 greater than 1 flash 36 flash 0 in these clubs last three meetings. With plus size Stephon Gilma back for New England and likely to man upon Demary Bayou's, he is best approached as a boom bust WR2 flash 3 play. Emmanuel Sanders' ankle didn't look right in his week 9 return. Managing one catch on five targets and sitting on the bench helmet less for most of the second half against the Eagles. Saunders is a high-risk WR3 option. AJ Derby caught one of three targets for 11 yards in Oshwiller's Week 9 start and appears safe to ignore. This pass catcher core is one to fade rather than bank on with fantasy plays. Score prediction. Patriots 23 Broncos 13 Monday Night Football Miami at Carolina Team Totiles Panthers 24.5 Dolphins 15.5 Monday Night's game is a smash spot for Camp Newton, who has logged top 10 fantasy results in four of his last six starts and now faces a pathetic Dolphins pass defense bat. Ranks 30 in DVOA while yielding the NFL's second highest completion rate 69.9% and third highest passer rating 102.6. The plus passing game draw boys camps floor, and his persistent scrambling significantly raises his ceiling with at least nine rushing attempts in four straight games. Newton leads all NFL quarterbacks with a very nice 69 scrambles on the season. Next closest is Tyrod Taylor at 50. Camp is my favorite odds relative bet to finish in this week's Fantasy QB1. Christian McCaffrey took over as Carolina's feature back in last week's win over Atlanta. Logging season highs in snap rate 82% carries 15 touches 20 and rushing yards 66 in a breakthrough game, while Jonathan Stewart lost to fumbles. McCaffrey's performance was promising ahead of the Week 10 date with Miami which has surrendered a combined 95-447-71-3 rushing line to enemy running backs in its last four games, including Alex Collins and Marshawn Lynch's season-best efforts in weeks 8-9. If McCaffrey's usage holds, he will be in every week RB1 the rest of the way. Stewart will stay involved, but he is never more than a low floor, touchdown or bust option. WR2. Nothing about the Dolphins cornerback unit is imposing. Sagnol is a work in progress as a 21-year-old hybrid player, but his week 9 snap rate 75% was easily the season high.
and Samuel is clearly being shoehorned into the Panthers' number to white out role. With 4.31 speed, Samuel will inevitably pop up for a big play in the near future. Your guess is as good as mine as to when it will occur. As for his Week 10 outlook, it is concerning Samuel missed practice time with an ankle injury. Early season tease Dixon was held catch less in last week's win over the Falcons and has topped five targets just once all year. He remains scoreless through nine games. With that said, Dixon's matchup makes him at least worthy of discussion. The Dolphins have been helpless against tight ends, permitting the NFL's second most receptions 53 to the position. They got ravaged by Jared Cook 8-126-0 last Sunday night. Cutler's posted J target distribution, Devante Parker and Julius Thomas 8, Jarvis Landry 7, Williams and Drape 6, Kenny Stills 4, Anthony Fasano 2. Back from his high ankle sprain in last Sunday's loss to the Raiders, Parker hobbled around for much of the second half. He has a concerning Week 10 draw against James Bradbury, the top cornerback in a zone-based Panthers defense that has allowed the NFL's 11th fewest completions of 20-plus yards 23 despite not having had there by. Downfield plays are Parker's bread and butter. I would start Parker as a WR3 in season-long leagues, but I think there is some reason for caution. Miami's best pass catcher matchup goes to Landry against a Panthers secondary that has struggled in the slot, where nickelback captain Munner Lind has PFX number 89 coverage grade among 115 qualifiers. Historically not a touchdown scorer, Landry is finding the paint regularly this year by leading the Dolphins in red zone targets 7 and targets inside the 10-5. Thomas was the main beneficiary of Miami's revised defense in last week's loss with season bests across the board 6-84-1. Whereas the Raiders are regularly gashed by tight ends, however, the Panthers have allowed the NFL's 8th fewest catches 32 and 7th fewest yards 364 to the position. Thomas is a high-risk, fringe streamer plane. Score Prediction, Panthers 28. Dolphins 17